Yeah, so oh, we're shit. we're on. Uh, so here it is. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Motherfucking Two. That's right. That's it's not in there. You look really close. It's, it's in. It's, it's small not font. in there, but I feel like that's font. what they wanted. In yeah, there. that would be great. To you know. know. Um. Everybody's back from the first. Everybody's the back. Awesome from the first. first movie. Sometimes you're not sure if the second's going to live up to the first. This easily fucking lives up to the first. Yeah, movie. within the first 30 seconds. And they have the yeah. intro, and you're like, all right. The introduction is awesome. It's so good. The first movie has Starler kicking aliens around. This has Baby Groot dancing around. Everyone's fighting while the Baby Groot is dancing, kicked. listening to uh, the Secret Mix 2, the Guardians Mix 2. Yep. Um, um, and that whole opening sequence is absolutely awesome. It is. And it's like, I love that they, because Guardians is its own beast. Yeah. So Guardians 1 is its own beast. Very much not, so. It, it is an origin flick, so there's an element of template to it, but not a lot. Not a lot. Okay? Not a lot. Whereas this one takes the Guardians template mm -hmm. and just expands upon it. Big time. So, I mean, even, so you get like a good five minutes of baby group dancing around, getting into hijinks. Yep. And each one of the cast members are interacting with the big, huge monster, while at the same time interacting with Baby Groot to some degree. And then finally, music stops, and now we get to the big actual battle scene. And so they open that up right away, mm -hmm. and that's just awesome. And so immediately, awesome. you still get the characters. Like, you get that Quill is, you know, generally smart and, and good at what he does, but he's not perfect. He's also a bit too overconfident and yep. cocky. You get... Drax, who thinks he's the strongest guy everywhere. He's not. You know. <laughs> he's hilarious, dude. You know, and you get Gamora still trying to call the shots, like sort of like a co-leader, yep. so to speak. Yep. And then you got uh, Rocket just being Rocket. Rocket being Rocket, and then Baby Groot. Baby Groot being Baby Groot. Fucking eating uh Fucking hilarious. And I was scared. Like, when I uh, I saw the trailers and we heard Baby Groot was going to be in it, first I thought, hey, that's really cool. But then it made it look as if Baby Groot was going to dominate this movie. Right. They really pushed him in the marketing. They really, For obvious reasons. He, he was going to push the toys. I get it, yeah. but at the same time, I was scared because I was like, yeah, but this is an ensemble. Okay? This isn't like Captain America Civil War where you have to really push Captain America mm -hmm. and the rest of the characters, but mostly Captain America because this is his movie. Yep. This is a Guardians movie. Yep. So you can't just push one over the other. So I was really worried about that, and I'm happy to say that they didn't do it at all. No. It was, like, comedic. He was mostly the comedic foil, but then there was a couple of times where you were like, okay, all right. Like, the, the scene where the Ravagers are, are just shitting all over yeah. the group. Yeah, yeah. You're like, oh, man. I felt so bad for the little crew. You know, and he's got those baby eyes, and he's just like, oh. <laughs> you <Yeah. laughs> like, grab him and hold him and just be like, everything's going to be okay. Yeah. It's going to be all right, yeah. you know. But, uh, man, do they ever do so much good with this movie? I love the part, like, right at the beginning where... Drax's idea is to jump in the belly of the beast, to claw from the inside, and as soon as he jumps in, like, both Quill and Gamora are like, no, 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 because it's dumb to think that the insides are going to be any less hard than the outside. Yeah. And you see him just hacking away, nothing's happening, <laughs> and of course when they finally do split the thing open, Drax is going to be like, yeah, it was all me, guys. Yeah. It was all me, you know? <clears throat> and he was another one, too, like, I remember when I first started to watch it, and he was making, like, tons of, like, jokes. He was more of a jokey character, and I thought, oh, I don't know, like, I don't know if this is going to really work. But again, like, uh, in Gun We Trust, because, yeah, sure, he was dialed up as more of a funnier character, but he still had a lot of really awesome character beats where you're just like, he's still really cool. Like, mm -hmm. really fleshed out. Um, the scene in particular was when he calls Mantis ugly. Right. And he's like, you're hideous. And she's like, oh, geez, why would you say that? Because when somebody loves you, that's how you know it's real. Mm -hmm. And you're like, fuck, yeah. wow. Great line. You know, now I get the impression that he feels he's the ugly one and his wife loved him and that's real. Yeah. You know, and I was like, that's awesome. So just little things like that where they're not hammering it in your face. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of giving these little quick character moments and you, you're like, yes, okay. So there's a progression here. It's not just the same old shit because they found a winning formula. Yeah. Pushes every character forward. Oh, so much so. Yondu and Rocket. The, the relationship between Yondu and Rocket, and then but even Yondu and uh, Star Lord. Oh. It's like, 
it's well, that so, one I want to push back to towards we'll, later. We'll on. wait till the but end, but still, I mean, everyone's character, everyone's relationship is actually Star Lord and Gamora. Though they're they're Gamora and Nebula. Are they getting together? Are they not getting together? Yeah. Like, and yeah, and Gamora and Nebula, the sisters. You know, the sisters of Thanos. Oh, man, like it, it's such. It's one of those movies where I love so fucking much about it. I don't even know how to talk about. it. Yeah, you know? like it's I really feel, hard I feel like because Seth's going to go to two hours if I just really kind of Simply because, yeah, because, like, it's just, like, ah, man. Um, okay, like, just thematically, so the first movie, Quill's story arc was him dealing with the fact that he wasn't there for his mom when she died. Mm-hmm. Okay? So he deals with that. So this movie deals with who's Quill's dad? We know Quill's dad is Ego because, of course, spoilers, trailers, trailers, and, trailers, trailers. and everything. So we know that it's going to be Ego. For comic book fans, Ego's a giant planet. How the fuck does yeah, that work? With a face. A big planet with a yeah. face. What? Ego in the movie is fucking spaceship surfing Kurt Russell. With bitching hair and beard. Yeah. I, it's all one. It's like Kurt Russell is already awesome. I we make him more awesome. You make him Ego. Yeah. Snake Plissken is now Ego. Yeah, exactly. Wow. So awesome. He was also in Soldier. Uh, you know what, never mind. Forget, mm-hmm. forget I said that. We, we got to do a Soldier Camcast one day. <laughs> That's going to be a live one. Just rip it. Oh. <laughs> 45 basis, minutes in, and he said that his first word. No the way. basis for uh, Terminator mm-hmm. is the same basis for Soldier. Yeah. It's Cameron ripped him off completely. I think it was Philip K. Dick who wrote the initial yeah. short story. Ripped him off completely. Made one of the greatest two movies, two of the greatest movies of all time. And then we got Soldier, and it was like, what the fuck? From the mind behind Minority Report <laughs> and Blade Runner comes this flaming piece of shit. This dumpster fire within a dumpster Directed by the fire. guy that gave you Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Okay, so yeah, yeah, for sure. We'll uh, definitely do that one. Live yeah. action. With drinks. We'll actually get drunk watching... I like that idea. Okay. Yeah, so, great. I mentioned this. So, Rocket is a prick in this movie. Like, right at the beginning, he's kind of a douche. Like, he's a hairy little asshole. So, like, the the perfect beings... I can't remember what they're called. Yeah, the gold people. The gold people are the reason why they were fighting the monster in the beginning. Yeah. Okay? So... Killed the monster. Now they go to collect the bounty. That's all they had to do. Collect the bounty. Simple. You know, maybe you know. Uh, maybe Star Lord flirts with them a little bit. Mm-hmm. Maybe he may, might get somewhere. Rocket steals a bunch of batteries just to steal a bunch of batteries and sell them. Yeah. So sure, we get the really cool scene where now the Armada is after them. Yep. And it's all just them in like just fucking VR style ships. ships. I've watched a bunch of sci-fi movies. Okay, so yeah. many that I was like literally going, why didn't I see something like that before? Yeah, we don't want to die, so we're just gonna control the ships from here. Yeah, that's genius. And yeah. as a gamer, that's also awesome. Yeah, because like, yeah, fuck yeah, why would I want to be in the cockpit when I could just be here in the cockpit? Yeah, here's my cockpit. Oh, my ship blew up. I am still. Alive. I'm totally fine. I gotta wait a few minutes for my new ship to respawn, but yep. I'm okay. Everything's great. That was awesome. So great. But yeah, um, so when we get uh, Yondu literally calling out Rocket going like, I know everything about you. Yeah. I know you. And Rocket's like, you don't know shit. And then uh, Yondu's just like, yeah, I do. You're pushing everybody away so that you don't ever have to get hurt. Boom! Because I'm the same way. Rocket's just like, "Eh, fuck. Yeah. (laughs) You know? This is true. We got that wicked scene where Rocket's fighting the mercenaries in the bushes. Yeah. Like, Raccoon style, even though they call him Rabbit in some movies and <laughs> Rodent in others. Or they call him a raccoon and he's like, what's a raccoon? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but that was like, there's, ah, man, there's just so many great scenes. So like, of course, when Yandu does that, I was like, oh man. So now, I love Rocket even more. Because you're like, well, of course he's not, he's going to want to tell him to stay away from him because he doesn't want to get hurt. Yeah. Because we talked about it in Guardians the first one. He had the most tragic backstory. So, yeah, like, I mean, he's starting to get it. Towards the end of the movie now, it's like his family. Mm-hmm. You know, that's his family. You know, he's got baby Groot. You know? It's the, the it's very much about family. The inclusion the of movie. Mantis. 
Mantis is so great. Fit in perfectly. Palm, what's her last name? Palm Clementef or something? I can't remember. She's not going to guess this. Oh, there she is. Yeah, Plum Clementef. Fit in perfectly. Never heard of her in my life. The nope. actress, never heard of her in my life. No. Nope. Didn't give a fuck about Mantis either. No, but like. Oh, wow, that was amazing. Yeah. So good. So the great. The way like, she played her and, and her just. Just her, being the reason her character that moments. Hugo can sleep. Yeah. Which I thought was really kind of cool because you're right. Like, for a guy that's destroying countless civilizations just to find the one kid that could be just like him. Mm-hmm. It, I'd like to think it'd be hard for me to sleep too. Yeah. You know, even though if I'm just like, literally my mindset is, yeah, okay, I'm doing it, but I, that's, I gotta do it. Mm-hmm. Right? So people have to die. Right? But she fits into the Guardians like that. So great. There's no like, uh, why is she here? Yeah. It's like, huh, okay, all right. Um... Uh, well, fuck, ego. This is so much. Ego. The whole, everything about ego. Ego, just even, I think the only part that kind of, like, why does he give Quill's mom cancer? He explained in the movie. I'm trying to remember, like, because I remember just, even when he explained it in the movie, and I've watched it a couple of times since, and I remember just being like. I, I guess because if he knew she was still out there, he wouldn't be oh, able to yes. focus on his. That's his, right. Robert. He killed her so that he could he, continue he was, his mission. She was the first one he actually loved. That's right. That's right. And I remember just kind of being like, yeah, but cancer? You couldn't just kill her? Yeah, you couldn't just have like a fucking boulder fall on her? Yeah. Or, like, or just like snap yeah. your fucking fingers. You're yeah. a goddamn celestial. I'm going to give you a disease that will just rot you away. It's going to rot you away. And uh, I know you have a family. Mm-hmm. So that family's going to totally get Be fucked destroyed. up over Completely this. Destroyed. But who fingers crossed you're gonna have, you have a kid. Please, God, have a kid. You know? Even though the fight scene with a powered-up Star Wars and Ego was easily one of the best That's superhero so fight good. scenes. That's so awesome. Like, I loved how it was, like, Ego was organic. Like, rocks, and grass, and whatever the planet was. He, That's how he was as he was fighting. And Quill was full-on Superman. Just yeah. fighting. And, like, it was so great. Quill's uh, plot line was great because you felt for him. Because now he finds his dad. He doesn't want... Feels something's wrong, but he doesn't want to admit doesn't it. Doesn't want to believe it. It's, Gamora's it's even saying, "Hey, that. something seems wrong." Everybody, here. everybody's saying, "Hey, don't do this," and, he, and then he and then he starts to push away his friends, Everyone. his family, because, because he wants to play catch with his dad. This is my dad. You know, I found my dad, and, and I get that. And it, but it, that one was kind of an eye roll because you knew, you knew it was coming. That was probably the only weak part of the whole movie where you're just like, because mm, that's cliche. Mm-hmm. That's cliche. No matter how cool. Kurt Russell is in this movie. Yeah. He's super cool. But even when he starts to get menacing, he turns it up. And then you're like, where was this guy in Soldier? What the fuck? <laughs> I'd buy this movie in a minute, but nope. <sighs> Never mind. Nope. He had he didn't have a beard, that's what it was. Yeah, he had his uh, a, he had a Stargate a beard. Look. Yeah. Yeah, it was straight on Stargate. <laughs> straight up. Yeah. Um But this movie, um, it follows like the Winter Soldier thing. Where it's not a filler sequel. No. Because you know there's going to be a third guard. Yep. And they could have rested on their laurels just like Thor 2 did, Iron Man 2 did, and Avengers 2. Exactly. This one was like, no, we're going to expand the universe. Mm -hmm. And now, so in the first one, technically they were fighting to save the universe. Technically. But really it was fighting to just get the Power Stone and save Xandar. Okay. This feels very much this more one is like saving the galaxy. Saving the galaxy. Yeah. Uh, the only time it really bugged me was when they showed shots of Earth getting messed up because, well, where was any Avenger? Yeah. Any Avenger. And we've talked about this in the past, where I, where I'm basically, it, it, it happened so quick. Yep. I'm sure an Avenger did show up. It was just after. But show that because I immediately was taken out of the movie because I was like, like when the first clip ha- happened, I was like. Okay, that's crazy. You're fucking up Earth. When the second clip happened, I was like, nobody showed up. Not even like uh, Nick Fury in a car showed up. Like, I mean, I get it. It could be rural uh, Midwestern America, but Iron Man doesn't show up. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it it doesn't have to be anything other than you just see Iron Man flying and then maybe stop because it's over. Something, yeah. He doesn't have to say anything. You don't have to pay 
fifty million dollars to Robert Downey Jr., you just use Iron Man's suit. Mm-hmm. That's it. But that part was it's a minor thing, but it's I feel like that's one of those where if we keep doing movies like this That's yeah. Then I'm gonna start saying things like, Well, hold on a second. Because um now that you mention it <laughs> in our Infinity War episode that we haven't shot yet because we didn't watch Infinity War yet, I have to think, okay, all these aliens are coming to New York again, right? Is a Netflix series gonna touch on this? Yeah, I mean, like, the Netflix series does touch upon... On um, the first film. But that's it. But this happened in New York. It's very weird. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's... It, it's becoming more... Daredevil the more season they add. going to mention Spider-Man at some point? Yeah, or... will, will Daredevil vanish at the end of it? Or will Night... Uh, or, like, uh, Luke Cage reference? You know what I mean? So... The more you add to it, the more it's going to be hard to fucking... Because it's yeah. all different creators on this. It's like, not... Well, I mean, Kevin... Beige. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, like in the comic books, you see it; they have it, and it, it can even just be a throwaway panel in a comic book, but nobody bats an eye. Right, right. So why, you know, why does it have to be so difficult here? You want to see the the greatest bonus collectible ever? Yeah, I do actually. I just caught a glimpse of it, and I was like, oh my god, oh my god. Flip this over. Oh yeah, that is just fucking nuts. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but okay, so that's that's really funny. That's so great. But like, uh, I will say though, the Ravagers being the original Guardians was awesome. Very cool. And yeah. then with that, you get Stallone. Yeah. Sylvester Stallone. That like, was awesome. Not only the fucking James Gunn, you know, get the fucking cast of Cliffhanger back together. He got Tango and Cash in his film. Wait, hold on. Cliffhanger cast. Yeah, Michael Rooker and Sylvester Stallone. But no John Lithgow. No John Lithgow. He was like the crux of the movie. Yeah. Are you going to tell me that that crazy bad guy wasn't the crux of the movie? Yeah. Tango Cash. I'm going with Michael Rooker. Hundred percent. That's a great hearing. 100% Tango Cash. Tango I never Cash. thought of that. No, that's fucking yeah, hilarious. Tango Cash. That's so awesome. Yeah. So awesome. Man. Oh. I love James Gunn. What about the resolution of the Sister Thanos? That fight scene that, that was, was epic. That was Down in like that cave. But I love that finally she's just like. Finally breaks down and they finally have that yeah. heart to heart. And like literally just like I was trying to be like you because he liked you more. Mm-hmm. Snake? Kodak? Snake? Is that... Hold on. I think it's something to do with pancakes. Ah! Uh, yeah. But, like, I love so that great. scene. And I loved it because, like, they gave layers to Nebula that they didn't have to do, but yep. they did. Like I said, like, everybody in this movie, it gets a, like, their stories are furthered, mm-hmm. right? Um, I feel like, well, I feel like now, Star-Lord can be Star Lord. Yeah. You know? Like, because that whole search for my father is out of print. It's done, it's over with because he realized that sure he wasn't my dad, but Yondu was my father. Yeah. And Yondu got to say the greatest line of all time, uh, which was I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then and, and it was cool. And then that end. <sighs> that is probably like I, I'm I'm a crier. I'm a crier too. I'm a pussy. I'm crying. That is probably the most I've cried in a Marvel movie. That was a very sad ending. That was very. It was very. It was bittersweet because like bittersweet, but yeah, you know. But like he got to like you. You realized who thought I would ever shed a tear for fucking Yondu. Yeah, Yondu. And yet, you know, you shed a tear. Plus, he gets his. uh, He gets his ravagers. Yep. Um, Finally. Forget him or... The death, like he gets, yeah, his, exactly. Not his death, but his uh, his funeral. Mm-hmm. He gets the Ravagers send off. That's the word. Send, send off. He gets that send off. You know, they actually they save the full on universe. Uh, I also like how there's no mention of the Infinity War. All of this, no. You know, there's no stones, no nothing. It's just 
you know, looking for his dad, finds out his dad is actually yeah. a crazy batshit. You got the daughters of Thanos in here, yet you didn't have to fucking shove the Infinity Gauntlet down your throat. That's right. You touched on it a little bit in the first movie. It's the first time we got to see Thanos actually fucking talk. You got to see Thanos talk, you got to see him move, and then, of course, we, it's all about the Power Stone. Yeah. And then the next movie, and I thought for sure this was going to be touching upon, but they don't. No. And it was refreshing. Like, I wasn't it was like, very geez, refreshing. I wish they would have mentioned something. I was just like, okay, all right. And I love that about the Guardians movies, because even though the Guardians are going to be in Infinity War, their own movies are very much just their own universe. Yeah, I really like that. I, I And I honestly, like, even after we reviewed, like, Homecoming, I really do kind of wish that Homecoming was its own movie. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, mm-hmm. I wish that they scaled back Tony Stark even more. Yeah. You know? Just let it be Spider-Man. Yeah. Or at least if you're going to have Tony Stark in it, have it be a lot more smart. Because <laughs> there's a lot of dumb shit. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway. Um, man, like... I even love the suits in this one. Suits it's more great. of a uniform. The soundtrack look for them. is great. The soundtrack you know, is great. The zoo. Awesome mix of volume two. The, the, the zoo, zoo coming in. The Yandu, yeah. the real father, was like, "Hey, you know, I, hey, hey, like he would have wanted zoo. you to have this," and he's just like, "Oh!" And instead of it being an iPod, it's the yeah. fucking zoo. And I was like, "That's the greatest thing ever." Because I was actually thinking, like, "Well, if we've got the two tapes, well, what do you do now?" Mm-hmm. The zoo is the perfect thing. It's perfect. So great. Here, I found this oh. on Earth that plays music. I think you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> just, just genius. Yeah. 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 Like, oh. So great. This, uh, and even that part there, too, is like, I found this on Earth. Well, of course he'd go to Earth. Mm-hmm. You know, his son is from Earth. Like, the know? whole the whole, the whole ego thing with Earth and the Earth getting destroyed a little in that one yep. thing. I mean, it, it's like, it's one of those eye-rolling things, like the Civil War and Zemo. Yeah. But again, it's nothing that takes me out of no, the movie so much exactly. so where I'm like, ugh. Yeah. I love this fucking movie. I would watch this movie probably right until the day I die. Like, yeah. Actually, I think if I knew I'm dying, that's going to be a lot of movies that I'm watching before I die. Very, so, oh, yeah, very slow. Like, death. I really hope that, like, the doctor's literally like, you have X amount of time left. Then yeah. I go... Can we quantify that in movies? Yeah. Because yeah. it's not just superhero movies. I'd have to watch, like, a ton of Nicolas Cage shithole movies. Actually, I'm just kidding. The ones that I would want to watch are actually good movies. Yeah. Like, Matchstick Men is still amazing. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know? I would want to die with um, Nick Cage getting the bunny. Fuck. Yeah, but you can't do it, though. I just... Oh, fuck. <laughs> what was his final words? The bunny. The bunny. Um, the bunny. But he did it like Nicolas Cage, so I guess he died happy. Give me the bunny. <laughs> oh, that happens. Oh, man. Do it without Nick Cage. I don't know. I don't know what we'd do without Nicolas Cage. I, can, you I don't know, know what? what we would do without Val Kilmer. Yeah, I love Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. I mean... James Gunn's got this thing for the 80s, right? He's, he's got the, the music in there. He's got Stallone and Kurt Yeah, Russell but with the Zoom, it's going to have to be in the 90s. It's going to be 90s. So 90s is perfect. Bring Nick Cage in. Bring Nick Cage in with some... James Gunn. Smells like Team Spirit. Yes. You know? Yeah. <laughs> or maybe some Gangsta's Paradise. Ah. You know? Yeah, a little Dangerous Minds. Um, yeah. Yeah. Or I'm, Amish Paradise. I feel like... Star-Lord would be a fan of Al- Weird Al Yankovic. He, he would be. Actually, that's great. Have Weird Al do a cameo. <laughs> oh, man. As Weird Al. As Weird Al. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'd be like, uh, who was it? Uh, basketball player in Men in Black. What was Men in Black 2? Basketball player. Yeah. He got all weird. He was in uh, Knockout. Oh, what? Kenneth Rowland? Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Knock off. That's what it was. It wasn't knock off. It was knock off. Yeah. That's right. That was an awful movie. Oh, man. That was the movie where I went, maybe I don't like Van Damme movies anymore. I actually liked knock off when I watched it, and then I rewatched it later on in life, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is terrible. Actually, knock off was the one with Rob Steiner. He was a double team with Van Damme. That's right. Knock off. Knock off. Rob Steiner. was okay. Double team was terrible. Double team was really terrible. (laughs) And I think there was a sequel with, uh, no, it wasn't a sequel, but he did another movie like Double Team. Not Jean-Claude Van Damme, but... Uh, That's Robin, he did do another action type of movie. I want to say it was with I, Rob Schneider, I, I, it was the worst movie ever. <laughs> he was not a good actor. 
He's not even an actor. And now, you know what? Now he's hanging around in North Korea. He, he wasn't even an actor, though. Like, no. that's the thing. He was just, like, he was brought in because he was Dennis Rodman. Yeah. And he was, like, he did You're the weirdest looking hair. basketball player. Let's make you a movie star. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Knock off with Rob Schneider. That's right. That's right. <laughs> He had a nice little run of playing action star sidekicks, though. He did. He was, wasn't he in, like, two of the uh, Stallone movies? He was in Judge Dredd. He was in Judge Dredd. That's, yep. yeah, I remember he that. He was in Judge Dredd. And, oh, God. Uh, that, was, one other, but... that was another shithole movie. Oh, man. There was a lot of bad comic book movies in the 90s. Just in general. Just, just in, general. in general. So many bad ones. Because, I mean, there's still, like, uh, I, I, I feel like uh, we should do a live viewing of the original Roger Corbin Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> you know what they released on Blu-ray? The original Captain America movie. Oh, you remember that? The Italian Red Snow. Italian Red Snow. Oh. Piano. And he had the hair. Oh my god! <laughs> so terrible. I, so terrible. I might buy it just so I can have a good laugh. Yeah, like I mean, for anybody that was like, no, the costume has to look exactly like it does in the comic books. Mm -hmm. Watch that movie, and you'll go, eh, nah, I'm good. No. I'm good. Mm -hmm. No, that way I thought should be changed like, even immediately. In the uh, first Avenger, that's like a bang on representation, pretty much. There's mm -hmm. no chain mail, but yep. that might as well be it. But even then, you're like, that kind of looks okay. Mm -hmm. But not until you get the real costume that you're like, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah. Do that. Do that yeah. thing. So, so part yeah. one of phase three cinematic universe. That is it. That is it. Guardians is amazing. Next Civil up is War part is amazing. Two. That you've Infinity already War. probably watched. Which you've already seen. Infinity War. Yeah, everything's fucking out of order. But that's okay, because as you said, we're going to do the Tarantino. Tarantino it. Yeah. Because if you Start at the it, end and yeah. go back to the beginning. Or start in the middle and go to the front mm -hmm. and maybe go to the back a little bit. Yep. Who gives a shit? We just do what we want. And maybe add some Bing Rames and a Gimp Mask. Please don't. Oh, wait, yep. how are you going to do Bing Rames and a Gimp Mask? Because he wasn't wearing the Gimp Mask. He wasn't wearing the Gimp Mask. But, but we don't need to did, talk about that scene. Did have as much as I love Pulp Fiction, it was in a hole. That was terrible. Oh, oh, God, why? What? Why? I thought Bing Rams was such a badass until I saw the scene. And now oh. all I see is that guy. I actually think that makes him more badass. That he took it? Because he took it and then still was like, yeah, we're going to fucking fuck these guys up. Yeah. It wasn't like crawl into a hole and die. He was yeah. like, no, these guys are dead. So, and then later he was like, we're cool. We're cool. Don't ever mention yeah. this to anyone. Tarantino, I'm never doing a movie with you again. Where's Ethan Hunt? I'm going to go do that for the rest of my life. No more Tarantino. <laughs> Did he immediately do the whole nine yards? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I'm staying away from Tarantino. Yeah. Well, I I'm mean, done. What else could he have done in those movies, though? I don't know. They've been. Okay, so that is that. Is it? Is it? I feel like it is. Yeah, that's it. Part one. <laughs> that's, we're Part done. one. Phase we're three. And here's how they here. fucking recorded this time, because I'm done. And also, fucking subscribe done. like crazy. Please. Like like crazy. We just want to be Share. able to do this without having a long ass string. We want to be able to say, YouTube, geek pants. That's it. That's it. Okay? No, because. I, I can't pronounce what the geek pants are. You're not now. wearing your geek pants, you're naked. <laughs>